so here are my cubes almost finished I still haven't put the buttons on the handles um, but generally they're all done and down the bottom as well down there and I'm much happier with them the way they look now if you want to see what they look like originally um, I'll put a link to my craft room tour and you will see they were just plain tan and I wasn't very happy with them. I'm still, you know, not a fan of cubes for storage but I, this is a much prettier option I think than what they were and um, I hope it helps somebody else who might need to find a way of brightening up their cubes as well so they're all a little bit different all a little bit different. Now the ones in the middle I still have these different handles on them and that's simply because let me show you and this is the reason I had to change it in the first place and that is the reason I've had to do this. This is what the cat did to the front of the box before I moved into this room because they were in the hallway and the whole second row of the cubes, this is what she did to them. So I just turned them around and added a handle to the other. So I'm very, very pleased with the way they turned out. I think they look very pretty. And I don't think... Uh, I put a crown on my box down here. That's my paper, 12 by 12 paper. It's actually mainly Creative Memories paper. Whenever I order paper, I pretty much use it straight away. There's the handle for that big box. And right in the corner, I don't think I showed you, but around that corner, that's a silver bucket and that's got Christmas stuff in it for crafting with and some packaging like um, bags and, pit, you know, the popping plastic stuff. So that's hidden in the corner down there. But this is done. Mm, so happy. So happy that's done. Now I can get back to normal crafting, but it is still crafting, isn't it? It's still crafting. Okay, I hope you enjoy the how-to. Take care. Bye-bye. So to make the lace trim on the outside, I chose um, some laces that were sent to me by Lynn Harris quite some time ago. And the reason I chose these ones is because she sent a lot. And I have shared it with a few people, but she, there's still a lot of it. Um, far too much that I would actually use in everyday crafting. So, and there's, there's another one there. So I thought this was the ideal use for it. So I chose, um, I think there was another one as well, but just to show you, I chose not too wide um, and in a colour that I wanted, I chose, a, you know, a lightweight, soft lace and I also used my tool and as some of you may know, I, I was um, sent two of these rolls. Now they're huge, they're huge rolls. This. This is the size of the roll when I got it. And I've done well, look. <laughs> this is how much I've got left now. I've been using it for as much as I possibly can. And this is another ideal use for it. And what I did was I took off quite a long length of the tool and I got a lace and I just scrunched it together at one end and sewed it and then I gently twisted it very you know in soft waves like that and then I just ran a stitch on the sewing machine down the center of it and kind of wiggled it around a little bit as I was sewing okay I've threaded up my machine I have my roll of tulle that I'm just going to put under my desk um, rather than cut pieces off, I have a length of the lace that I'm using. I'm just going to kind of scrunch those two ends together like that. Put those under the machine. I've just got a straight stitch. It's on a number three setting, so not too long, not too short. 
and then I'm just holding the both of them and see that gentle, I hope you can see it, that gentle twist like that. And then as I sew, as I sew, I'm just going to maneuver it. So I'll just show you for a minute. And then twist again. Twist again like that. Do that all the way down to the end. Once you're finished, just lift it up. You could actually now um, you could actually now get another piece of lace for another cube scrunch it up underneath there and continue with the next one but if you only wanted to do one of course you would just cut it off there um, so that's pretty much all it is it's very simple but you could use this trim in such a lot of other ways as well. I mean, I'm just using it around my cubes, but, you know, you could use it in your journals because it's not thick at all. You could use it on your tags. You could use it on any paper crafting because it's very narrow with the tool. Um, but you could also use it to decorate your um, fabric crafts as well. So if you've got an abundance of tools, or more than enough lace that you might not um, find yourself using, this is another great way that you could use it up. So the first thing you're going to do is get your cube. Now, if your cubes aren't too full, you don't even have to worry about emptying them out or just take some of it out. But it's quite easy enough to do when you still have things inside of it. The first thing I did was I painted around the edges of my cubes. I just used an off-white color. This, you can use any paint that you have. This is just an, a, a chalk paint that I use for basically everything like furniture and things like that. It's just a multi-purpose type of paint. I'm going for a shabby look, so I'm just giving it one coat, just about probably mm, three quarters of an inch or one or two centimeters around the edge. Uh, I like it to look shabby, so I don't need full coverage. If you want full coverage, give it a, another coat or two. I also painted the handle as well. I'm only painting the front of the cube, nothing else will be seen. After you've painted and let the paint dry around your cube you need to decide what paper you're going to use. I'm using the lovely Rose Avenue collection by Kaisercraft. It's what I bought months ago um, to use to decorate my room. I bought a, a three or four packs months ago and decided that I would use it because I love the colors in it. It's very soft. It's very shabby. I got this from a craft, a craft shop online, Bev's Cross Crafts, and I'll put a link to that in the description box below because for those people in Australia who find it hard to get certain papers, you may just find them in this store. Um, very, very good customer service. I get all um, my Kaiser Craft paper there, but I also get uh, the Stamperia paper packs there as well. Wonderful prices, great shipping. I was a few pages short to finish all my cubes. I ordered a few more sheets and a couple of other things, but I ordered them on the Wednesday. They arrived on the Thursday. The store is actually located in Tasmania and I live in Queensland. So I was just, I couldn't believe how quick that shipping was. But just um, to let you 
Australian ladies out there know about that store. Um, I mean, I'm not associated with them in any way. Okay, um, so this is your cube, and what you need to do with your cube is make a little cover for it. You need to measure down and you need to measure across and then you need to measure the, sh the, the size of your handle there. Okay now every cube is going to be different because these are not 12 by 12 cubes. These are only, um, what are they? Where's my tape measure gone? These are actually uh, 27 centimetres, which is just over 10 and a half inches. So I've actually cut my paper smaller than that. I've cut my paper 10 inches, which is 25 and a half centimetres. So each cube, like even my old cubes and these newer cubes, although they look the same, the measurements are different. So you'll have to measure your own cube to make a template and then all I've done is I've got glue strings <laughs> is it's like a rectangle but the top part I've left open like that so that I can slip that under and have it on like that now I tend to grab my baskets from underneath like that so I've put that out that join at the top there if I was going to go if I grab my handles from the top there that might catch on my fingers a bit much so I would put that opening down the bottom so see see how you you know get your baskets out like whether you tend to do that or whether you tend to do that and make your cut accordingly okay so the next thing we do is we're going to Put some glue on our paper and I'm just using a homemade glue it's actually a gesso and I got the recipe from Pink Poodle Crafts I will put a link to that in the description box below also but because it's made of glue it works like glue it's a matte gesso so there is absolutely no shine to it whatsoever and that's why I decided to go with this so I don't, you know, if I accidentally get some on the other side I don't have to worry about those shiny parts because it won't be recognisable at all. Um, so be generous with your glue. You could use hot glue if you want but the reason I am having to do this is because my cat likes to scratch my boxes but she doesn't like the smell of glue anything that I have covered and used glue she will not she doesn't like so that is why I'm using so much glue on that side <laughs> to deter the cat okay so bring the box back up and I hope you can see what I'm doing well enough. I know you can't see it completely but until I get a large tripod or something this is um, the way I have to film. Now I've just laid that on there I'm just popping that under there like that. See and this is what I mean there's a bit of glue on my fingers but it's not going to affect my paper in any way. Just adjust it how you want it like that and then I've got a, where's that gone? I've got a, a rag here. I'm just going to press it down with that rag and as you can see I've got a little border all the way around. And this dries up really nicely. Now normally I would let that dry but for the sake of the video um, I'm just going to go ahead and show you how I put the trim around it. Where's that trim? Okay. So this is one of my trims here and all I'm going to do is start at the bottom. This is where I use my hot glue. Put a little bit. That looks
It's a bit more than a little bit, doesn't it? Which end am I starting with? We might start with that end there. And just lay that there to start it off. Okay, and I don't put glue all the way like that. I just do every so often. I leave a couple of inches, put a bit more, do some on the corner, put a, leave a bit more gap, put a bit more. Um, that way you don't go through quite as much glue either because so sort of it's like a big sewing line, you know, a little bit and then none. And just go around the whole box like this. Now your corners don't, you know, work your corners out a bit. Sometimes you might fold them over like that. Other times you might just do that, which looks quite nice. It's nice and shabby. So there we go. Still in my pajamas. That's how early it is. <laughs> Husband's just gone to work. It's about quarter to seven. <laughs> I need to go and get changed. And then just just work it around however you want it. And just go around the whole box like that and finish that off and with the handle I usually find I've measured very generously for the box and I end up with a piece left over I've got another one here somewhere I end up with a piece left over from the trim and I use that to go across the handle like that and let's see on it like that and all I do is put some glue on here like that you can put a little dot in the center if you want just to hold it so it doesn't I've got a bit of pen mark there I don't know how that happened um, won't matter, it's covered. And then adjust it a little bit and Perhaps trim it off on an angle, a little bit of an angle. I think I might, um, I'll either put buttons here or like just not special buttons. You know, you don't want to be using all your special, special stuff for this or something like that. I have some of this, a little bit of this trim, so there's a lot of those, so I may put something like that. I haven't made my mind up yet, so uh, I'll probably tuck that in a little bit there too. There we go. Did that even go in? But you get the idea, just go all the way around the box like that. If you don't sew, there are other options you could use. Now this is just a, a piece of fabric, it's a piece of satin. You could actually, it's just, you could glue it onto your paper before you stick the paper to the box if you like or when it's on the box just as an example just hold hold it like that and then just 
just put a couple of dots and just kind of runch it as you go like that and you could get like a runched effect around the edge of your box you could use a finer fabric than that if you want as well um, you could use some tulle with the same fabric just cut the fabric let's just use this perhaps cut the fabric a little bit thinner have your tool and your fabric start it off like that and then you know do the same as you would with sewing but twist it and then every so often put a dot of glue to hold it in place like that I mean probably do the twists a bit bigger but this is just an example and and keep going all the way down and you would get the same effect without sewing so whatever I do with sewing you can most of the time find a way to do the same thing with glue okay